Don't think that because someone is a native speaker, it's going to be absolutely perfect all the time. Now, uh, just to, can I tell you a little story? Because Lynn Truss has written a book, and uh, the name of the book is quite funny, and the story behind it is like this. What is this? It's a panda. What's it eating? Not exactly grass. Uh, pandas uh, come from China. Uh, and there's a particular kind of plant uh, that grows where the pandas live. Uh, we can make it into furniture. Yeah? It's called bamboo. Yeah? Obviously, when it's furniture, it's, ha it's hard. Bamboo. Yeah? Oops. Can someone... Am I still linked up? Yeah? Uh, so the panda eats the bamboo before it's hard, when it's nice and green, yeah? when you've got green shoots of bamboo, yeah? the first uh, buds and then the shoots of the plant. So there's a story, a j it's a joke really, of this panda. Now pandas are usually peaceful animals, aren't they? Pandas are peaceful animals. Yeah, nice animals, sweet animals. Yeah. Uh, this panda goes into a cafe and uh, says, I'd like a, a, a sandwich, please, salad sandwich. Yeah? In a shopping mall. And the, in a shopping mall, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And the barista, the, the person uh, behind the bar in the coffee shop, uh, prepares the sandwich, gives the panda the sandwich. Uh, the panda eats the sandwich and then the panda takes a gun out of its pocket and shoots into the air and then is about to go walks out of the coffee shop and the next day the panda comes back to the same coffee shop and, and the person who serves the coffee there says listen what's the matter why you know why did you come in why did you eat that salad sandwich take out a gun shoot it in in the air and then go and the panda takes out uh, a book which is all about uh, China and about uh, pandas and says, look at this sentence. And the panda, um, there's the panda with the gun, yeah? And the panda says, uh, look at the sentence in the book about pandas. It says, eats, shoots and leaves. Yeah? There is a comma there. In fact, the sentence should have been eats shoots and leaves yeah b bamboo shoots yeah? so just putting a comma uh, in the wrong place in a sentence can change the meaning so we should be very careful and we should encourage our students to be very careful with uh, punctuation so she's called her book if you're interested if you want to go to the library if you want to uh, get a copy of that book it's called eats shoots and leaves yeah so that is about the mistakes that native speakers make yeah so be careful don't take always native speakers as a as a perfect model yeah another thing is how many people here are teaching young people <coughs> young students yeah what age group 13 14 yeah so maybe if you're teaching a 13 or a 14 year old you think hmm I wonder how 13 or 14 year old uh, children speak in England yeah maybe I should teach them some of the language that a 13 or a 14 year old uh, uses in England well I have a, uh, uh, some nieces and nephews who are round about that age uh, in England and they use language like this by the way rather than uh, talk about young people's way of speaking we could say youth like youth yeah but but pronounced in a in a sloppy way youth slang yeah so uh, let me give you a little test don't go giving me the evils okay this is an example of how young people in England might talk yeah what does that mean? Don't go giving, giving me drugs. Don't go giving me germs. Don't go giving me bad looks. 
Yeah, it's it's bad looks. Yeah? But I wouldn't I wouldn't teach that in the classroom. Don't go giving me evils. Yeah, because uh, the problem with slang. Okay, it's fashionable now, but maybe next year it's not going to be fashionable anymore. People will forget it and the language will change. So even if we're teaching young students, I think we should be careful about saying, yes, maybe young English people, we should teach the same. I don't think so. I think we should go for more of a standard approach. Yeah? Can you face this problem when we teach standard language mm. to our students and they listen to films and their songs? Yes. They uh, listen to the language of the manifesto. Yes. It's part of uh, these Exactly, yeah. But you should say to students, I think, uh, with any kind of language like this, it's not a bad thing if they understand the meaning. So if they hear, if they go to New York and they hear someone say something, uh, it's good if they understand it. I heard a terrible story. Uh, I, w I was living in Canada, teaching in Canada for a time, and I heard a terrible story about a Japanese student who had never learnt the phrase freeze. Now freeze literally means uh, to make very very cold less than zero degrees and so it becomes ice. But it's often used for example by policemen uh, when they want to stop someone they say freeze and, and you should just stop, not do anything. And there was a case where a poor Japanese student whose English was not very good, uh, he went into somebody's house I don't know whether he was meeting uh, a fellow student. He walked into the house. The homeowner, you know, in America, uh, very often the, they would have a gun in the house. The homeowner was worried. Uh, the, per the student walked in. The homeowner got the gun and said, freeze. And the student didn't know what mm, that meant and just went on walking and got shot. Yeah? So I think the, the, there's a case for sometimes teaching language so that the students understand it but saying to them be very careful mm, it, it's, it's slang if you use it you may make mistakes with it so it's better not to use it actively teach it for the students to recognize but not to use actively is my philosophy yeah okay so we've got some examples uh, here uh, let's do this. I won't ask you to do it as a written activity. We'll just do it as a spoken activity. Uh, could you share between two, yeah, if possible, yeah? Okay. If anybody wants extra copies, I can send them to you by email after the session. Yeah. Uh, let's do this as a spoken activity. Yeah. Uh, so, question number two: Am I bothered? What is the meaning of that? Am I excited? Am I scared? Am I worried? How many people think excited? How many people think scared? And how many people think worried? Yeah? How many people don't want to say that they think anything because they're worried of making a mistake? This is a game. Yeah? It's not a test. So the next one is, uh, stop dissing me. Excuse me, would uh, you repeat the second one, please? Because we were not sure, able to hear you. Sure, okay. The correct answer is C. Uh, am I worried? It's often used by teenagers. The, the, the mother says, uh, you should do your homework. And the teenage son might say, am I bothered? Am I worried by what you're telling me? Yeah? Okay. Uh, stop dissing me. It's actually making fun of. Now, I'm, I'm an English language teacher. I've constructed this exercise. So obviously the distractors, I've tried to make them look as if they're possible. So things like uh, disturbing, distracting, look as if they should be the correct answer. But the actual correct answer is don't make fun of me. Yeah? I, think, I think it... Could you share with the person next to you and I can send you, if you'd like, a full copy of the handout afterwards by email. No problem. Uh, it, it actually, I think, comes from disrespecting me. Dis, disrespect. Huh? Okay, what's your Addy? It's your, it's your email address. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's kind of uh, taking ad address, addy. Is it abbreviation? Yeah. Hmm? It's an abbreviation. Yeah, playful. It's playing with the language. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about you numpty? Uh, uh, no, it's a stupid person, a stupid person, numpty. Don't ask me where it comes from. Silly, yeah? silly person. Hey, your peeps are way cool. Yeah, it's your family. Yeah? The people that you know, the people, your people. Yeah? Uh, this is young people's slang. Yeah? Uh, it's what I was saying. Okay, at the moment it's fashionable. Uh, maybe in two years' time it won't be. People will have forgotten it. Language changes and moves on. So I think the problem, if you want to teach this to your students actively, uh, they might go, I don't know, they might go to Buckingham Palace and, and say to Prince William, hey, I like your peeps, and he won't know what on earth they're talking about. Yeah? So, whereas if you teach a standard English, uh, then people will, your, your, chil your students will be able to communicate with anybody. Yeah? So I would be careful about slang. On the other hand, if, if one of your students says, teacher, teacher, I'm watching a film, I've been watching a film, they say, peeps, what does peeps mean? Yeah? If you can give them the explanation for that, that's good. Yeah? But not for them to use it actively. Yeah? Uh, what about the next one? Uh, these trainers of mine are toast. Utterly destroyed. Yes, correct. Correct. Yeah? So if you say somebody is toast or something is toast, means it's finished. That's it. Destroyed. Completely, yeah. Uh, it was brassic today. Freezing. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. All the C answers were correct. You're clever, aren't you? Yeah. I I was I constructed this to to be able to say all the C answers are correct, but you've actually tweaked it. Yeah. Uh, there are dictionaries that are available. Um, there I there's one book that I want to show you which is very extreme. This is where I took these examples. Um, but there are some dictionaries of idiomatic uh, phrases, for example, published by Oxford University Press, which will give you some of the more modern languages. There's a dictionary of new words published uh, regularly by Oxford University Press, which gives you some of the new language which is coming into uh, English. So I think it's important to keep up to date as a teacher. I think it's important to, to refresh your English. For me, I live in Spain. I don't live in England. So I think I'm in a similar position to a lot of you. I, I'm not automatically surrounded by English. I have to look for it and I have to educate myself. And sometimes I go to England and I find, oh, there's a word. I don't know what this means. Yeah, because it's a new, uh, an example of language change. So I think we need to update ourselves. We do need to update ourselves. Yeah? And a, a, a dictionary uh, of the kind that I've mentioned can be quite useful. Uh, some of the programs that the kids watch on television, there's one called Little Britain, there's one called the Catherine Tate Show in England, they reflect this language back to uh, young people in England. These are comedy actors uh, who uh, do these characters who use these phrases. Uh, I don't know if you know the show Pimp My Ride. It's, uh, uh, they have a Middle East version of it. I've seen the, the American version where they take a really old, horrible car uh, which is totally wrecked and then they make it wonderful and they put a television in it and uh, you know, paint it newly, etc. Et um, I'm just talking about that because uh, the book that I used uh, for these, these examples of language change is called uh, Pimp Your Vocab. Uh, it's a fun look at the way that language is changing uh, and some of the modern slang. If you want a more mainstream book, some of the, uh, the Oxford Dictionary of New Words 
uh, I would strongly recommend more for language teaching. This is for a bit of fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, tell me about these flags. Do you recognise any of them? For example, uh, what what's uh, what's this one? Yeah. Um, what about this one? The whales. This one. Mhm. Mm uh, this one. Ireland. Uh, this one. Okay, there are two here. One is Australia and one is New Zealand. And this one? Okay, and this one? And uh, this one? Jamaica, thank you very much. Great. Now, uh, these characters here, they are wearing a certain kind of costume. Does anybody recognize it? It's got little pearl... Yes, it's got little pearl buttons on it. Okay, the, these are people from a certain part of London, uh, the east end of London, the east part of London. They're called Cockneys. Yeah, that's somebody who is born in the east of London. And the Cockneys have a tradition of uh, pearly kings and queens. Uh, if you're an important family in this community, you would wear uh, a suit which is covered in little pearly buttons. Yeah? They still have them uh, these days. And uh, this picture here shows where the River Thames uh, goes into uh, the sea. Um, this is called the Thames Estuary. And there's a certain kind, there's a certain kind of English which is associated with all these different uh, places. Yeah? One of the things that people feel these days, we were talking about RP, received pronunciation. Now my English is pretty much received pronunciation. Yeah? It's like standard British English. Do, yeah, do you know uh, where the term received pronunciation comes from? It means that you are suitable to be received at Buckingham Palace and to talk to the Queen of England. Your English is clear and nice enough to do that with no problem. Yeah? So that is a little bit old-fashioned now. I, I think that actually received pronunciation is quite nice. Maybe that's because I, I speak like that. Yeah? Uh, but there are people who say, Forget received pronunciation. Everybody speaks in their own different way. That's fantastic. Um, I have some problems with that. I think uh, you know we should go for a standard way of teaching our students. If whether it's standard American English or standard British English, it's easier for students if they're aware of a standard variety. We need to expose them to different accents, but I think it's better if we're teaching them one variety of English. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to uh, give you some uh, examples of uh, different accents. If you look at the bottom of this page, I'm going to uh, do the accent and you jot down what you think is the correct answer. Okay? So the first one is, what's this man? Okay, do you want to, shall we do that one together? Have a guess, what do you think? What's this man? It's not American. Uh, Okay, uh, the fact that we're pronouncing this as this, yeah? Filipino, most, uh, most Asian people like this. Okay, but yeah. Filipino isn't one of your options, yeah? yeah? It's got to be one of, the, one of the varieties in the, in the box. South Africa? No. It's actually Jamaican. 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 What's this man? Yeah? Uh, they... They, they have a tendency to pronounce th as d, and they would use this man, which we don't use in standard British English. Yeah, I don't generally go up to people in the street in England and say, "Have you got, have you got the time, man?" 
It's not a, it's not a British English thing. Yeah? Okay, the next one. Evan Elper. Okay, has anyone seen the film My Fair Lady? It's about a, a, a girl who uh, has to learn how to speak uh, properly. Yeah? And she has to say uh, little rhymes like in Hartford, Hereford and Hampshire, hurricanes hardly ever happen. Yeah? It, these little tongue twisters. Because she was born in London. She was born in the East End of London. And uh, people in the East End of London generally don't pronounce the H. Uh, uh, Cockney. Yeah? She, she, so Evan Elper is an example of Cockney speech. So, I mean, if your students are going to London and they meet someone who says to them, hello, uh, or they, they say, uh, Arads is over there, rather than Harrods is over there, yeah? uh, your students will have some problems. Yeah? So they should be aware that although they're learning standard English, not everybody speaks like that. And that's why it's good to use different CDs with different accents from different places, so that students get a little bit used to, not everyone's going to sound like uh, Queen Elizabeth, not everyone's going to sound like Barack Obama. Yeah? There are different varieties of English. What about the next one? I'm sure you're going to get this. Say, could I get some butter? Butter. Uh, okay, I interesting you say that. Um, this is uh, my interpretation of American English. Yeah? American English. Say, at the beginning of a sentence, say, could I get some butter? The fact that you have say at the beginning of a sentence is not t uh, typical British English. Uh, the fact that the T in the middle of a word is pronounced almost like a D and the fact that the R is sounded riding, riding, reading, riding yeah? Ma what's the matter? Yeah? Yeah? that is typical American but the interesting thing is of course American has some similarities to Irish because a lot of Irish people went over to America um, they influence the way that, uh, and from Scotland as well, and they influence the way that people spoke. Right, well, I'm sure you're going to get this next one then. So it's, sure, and I think you're right. Sure, and I think you're right. Actually, it's, it's supposed to be Irish. Irish, yeah. Sure, sure is a very Irish way of beginning a sentence. You were saying it sounded Egyptian. I don't know whether, <laughs> possibly, possibly some Irish people went to, to, to Egypt, yeah? Okay, uh, and tink, the Irish have a tendency to, to pronounce the th not as uh, think, but tink. I think you're right, yeah? Okay, the next one. We live in the outback, might. We live in the outback, might. No, 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 you. Cockney's gone. You can't have Cockney. Co yes, thank you, Australia. Maybe you got a little bit of clue from the vocabulary item outback, meaning the wild country. Yeah? Um, mate, but pronounced as might. My friend, yeah? It's really mate, M-A-T-E, but the pronunciation is might. Yeah? The other interesting thing about Australian pronunciation is that it tends to go up at the end. So somebody from Australia, even when it's not a question, yeah? So somebody would, from Australia might say, uh, I'm from Australia. Yeah, it's a wonderful day today. Yeah? So even if it's not a question, they would go up at the end. Now the interesting thing is, well there were two interesting things, one was we, we had a time in England where a lot of uh, television programs, uh, there was some series from Australia and lots of young people were watching those Australian programs and lots of young British people started going up at the end of a sentence because they were used to watching it on the television. Yeah? 
The other interesting thing is there's another, there's another of these places where people go up at the end of the sentence and that's Wales. And a lot of people from Wales went to Australia. That's why you have New South Wales in Australia because a lot of people from Wales went to settle in Australia. Okay, the next one. The next one. I'm very, I'm very well, thanks. Now this is, I'll, I'll give you a clue. This is from Britain. Hmm? Uh, well, they replace it with a W. Now, I don't know if you, uh, any of you remember the novels of jo Charles Dickens, but, uh, you know, s he, some of his characters say things like, very well, they use this. Yeah? Also, also, Brazilians that I speak to, I've had Brazilian students, they are unable to say my name. They don't say Bill, they say Bill. Bill, Bill, Mr. Bill. Yeah? Actually, ac it's Portuguese influence, yeah, definitely. Uh, the, uh, the area where that's quite common is in the Thames estuary. Yeah? So estuary English, uh, very often we'll use this very, we'll use a W sound. In <coughs> it's the area uh, to the east of uh, London, so it's ke partly Kent, uh, partly Luton Airport is uh, um, sort of in that uh, area around the estuary so uh, this estuary English it's not considered as bad people think Cockney English is very bad if you speak received pronunciation you think oh Cockney English oh they don't pronounce their H's how terrible yeah? uh, you don't think estuary English is very good but it's not as bad as Cockney yeah? Uh, what about this next one? I spoke to Jones the milk today. I spoke to Jones the milk today. No, good guess. But it's going up at the end of a of the sentence. And no, it it was the Welsh that also go up at the end of a sentence. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing about the Welsh is that a lot of people in Wales are called Jones. So the Welsh people tend to talk about their friends in the village where they live. There's Jones the milk. He's the, he's the Mr. Jones who delivers the milk in the morning. Jones the bread. He's the Mr. Jones who has the bread shop. Yeah? Well, it's kind of... They're, it's an epithet. They're using a, a Jones the milk is the milkman. Jones the bread is the man who sells bread. Jones the 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 newspapers. You know he's the one who sells the newspapers. It's a little bit strange because everybody's called Jones, so they have to they 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 have to find a way of talking about which Mr. Jones. Yeah? Okay, it's re it's really wit and windy weather to die. Now it's not Australian because Australian's gone. It's actually New Zealand. Uh, a very common thing about New Zealand English is that they, s instead of saying eh, they say i. Yeah. So not wet, but wit. It's very wit today. Uh, the next one. Who's it going? What you doing? No. It's the other one, it's Scottish, yeah? yeah? Who's it going? And the last one, I blend the leave in January. Yeah, that's South African, yeah? Uh, quite influenced by Dutch, I think, so they tend to pronounce the P's as B's, yeah? I blend the leave in January. Okay, so my feeling is, uh, if you think about all these different accents, um, which is better? to teach uh, students a standard variety of English, whether it's standard British or standard American, I think probably that's better uh, than uh, going with uh, one of these different varieties. The only uh, exception that I would make to that is if, for example, I don't know any of you, if you, if you have learnt your English in Australia, 
and you have an Australian accent and that's natural for you, then I think you should teach the way that you have learnt. You should teach that because it's a natural thing. But I think it's always good to use CDs of different accents so that even if you're teaching British English, your students will hear a little bit of American English, for example, or vice versa. Yeah? So we can use the CDs as well as the teacher's voice, as well as the teacher's voice, uh, to get across uh, the fact that not everyone speaks in the same way. Students have to be aware of that. Yeah? Yes. That's an interesting point. You're saying that uh, an American accent would swallow some of the letters. I don't agree with that. I'm not one of these. There are some British people who say British English is the best and all the other accents are not as good. I've lived in North America, I lived in Canada uh, for a couple of years, and my, uh, some of my students who uh, learnt, who were from Japan and Korea, they first learnt American English, and they found my English difficult to understand. They said, it's not clear. Yeah? And why was that? For example, I would say a word like brother, mother, father, yeah? There's no, they can't hear any R at the end. But with an American accent, you'd have uh, brother, mother, father, yeah? You would sound the R. Actually, you, you would do that in Irish as well. We said that Irish and American are quite similar. So it depends what the students are used to. If they're used to a British uh, teacher, a British accent mainly, they will probably find American a little bit different. If they're used to an American accent, they will probably find the British accent a little bit difficult at first. They were saying, you don't sound your R's. We, you know, you're swallowing your R's, they would say to me, these Japanese and Korean students. So by the end of my two years in Canada, I was saying things like uh, four, yeah, with an R, sounding the R at the end. My accent changed a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that, uh, is that uh, I mean, accent or uh, or the Well, mm, that's an interesting point. Um, I mean, there are certainly different varieties of English. I mean, the, you know, if you think about Australian English, if you think about American English, if you think about British English. But within British English, uh, you have your Scottish English, you have your Welsh English, you have your Cockney English. So whether you call those separate languages or whether you call those dialects is more of a political question. Yeah? These days um, I think a lot of parts of countries want to be considered as a, as a, as a different uh, uh, ethnic variety. They want to have their independence, if you like, within the country. So Scottish people want to have a certain amount of independence, although they're part of Britain. Yeah? So they would say probably Scottish English is a different language. Yeah? And yes? Uh, the language we teach today, the English language, yes. is not the language of Shakespeare. Yes. So the language is changing. Uh, yes. You see, uh, I say that uh, we should adopt some word, new words. Yes. To make a point of the new words. Yes. To adapt them uh, to our definition. Yes. Because language is changing as well. Yes. One day we will uh, teach slang language. Uh, yes. Standard. Yes. See? I don't disagree with you. Uh, what, what I disagree about the slang language is uh, just because it's fashionable at the moment doesn't mean it's going to be fashionable, you know, in the next five years or ten years. Language does change. Um, but if you're t teaching something you know, there was, a t there was a, a time when, for example, wicked went through a stage of, you know, normally it means very bad, then it went through a stage uh, maybe about 10 or 15 years ago, everyone was saying, it's wicked, meaning it's very, very good. Yeah? Uh, that's gone out of fashion, I think, a little bit now. So I think we should be a bit cautious. A publisher like Oxford does publish a dictionary of new words, 
but they have a committee that decides should this word go into the dictionary now they look at if it's been published in different magazines and newspapers and they, they vote they say yep this word should come in so we have, we have words that come into the language and are accepted in the language I don't think we should be teaching the students the language of Shakespeare yeah? uh, unless we're doing a literature course with them yeah? okay okay yes yes Yes. Uh, but we have two, uh, I think, two ways to write the word, like uh, French and American. Yes. American word and French word. Yes. We have another writ uh, writing way to the, 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 uh, the word. Generally speaking, um, the uh, the American, the difference between British and American English uh, resulted from in the 19th century, uh, Noam Webster who wrote the first Webster's Dictionary said English spelling is a bit crazy let's make it a bit more logical so that's when you know center with ER instead of RE came in OR instead of OUR uh, came in it's still not totally logical no generally speaking um, British English uh, has influenced Englishes like American English, uh, like um, Australian English, New Zealand English, they would follow more the British spelling pattern, um, and South African English probably would follow more the British spelling pattern. American uh, Canadian is an interesting one. Sometimes they're a bit like uh, the Americans. Sometimes they're a bit like the British. Yeah, yeah. so they're kind of halfway. Some, some, some accent uh, relates to British and other relates to American. In terms of the writing, it's not really to anything to do with the accent. The writing was a, a, a spelling reform uh, introduced by Mr. Webster in the 19th century when he created the first Webster's Dictionary in the, in the United States. He said, um, it's crazy. We don't say century, we say center. Yeah, so he, he swapped the E and, a, and the R around. He tried to reform the spelling. That's where the American spelling comes from. But it's quite interesting. Sometimes you'll see in North America uh, that although uh, theater, for example, ER is the standard American form, sometimes you'll see it written RE as well. Yeah? So it's an interesting one. Yeah? Yes? I'd like to ask you about the, the American accent, the, yes. the American dialect. Is it going to uh, occupy the world? It, and the, nowadays, is it more important than the British accent? Uh, we, we, we see that lots of schools, uh, uh, lots of schools are going to teach uh, the American uh, curriculum. Yes. 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 I, I mean, I think uh, the interesting thing is, of course, America has a lot of. Um, commercial business power in the world today. Uh, movies are an interesting point because um, yes, uh, America finances a lot of movies but Britain produces a lot of very good actors who go and work in America. So I don't think in England's going to do anything really. Um, all I would say to you is what I often say to my students. If you if you, uh, m in my experience in North America, people say to me, what sweet, what a sweet accent you have. Yeah? Speaking yeah, with the American people, to me, with my British accent. They think it sounds sweet, they think it sounds nice. Um, so uh, I think, I don't know, you know my, my tendency is to feel that Americans still quite like an, a British English accent. Not so sure about British people liking an American accent. I think they're sometimes a little bit distrustful uh, of it. Um, I think in general we are moving towards a situation where uh, we are going to have a, a kind of international English, mid-Atlantic English. In, in the 19th century uh, British people and American people found it quite difficult to understand each other. But these days, because of television, because of the movies, because of British actors going to Hollywood, um, people can understand each other much better. 
uh, an, an ordinary British person these days would understand sidewalk, would understand faucet, uh, you know, instead of pavement and tap. Yeah, in the in the old days, you know the varieties of English were a bit more marked. These days they're coming together, so I think we're going to have a kind of mid-Atlantic yeah. sort like of English. In, uh, our country, Egypt. Uh huh. Uh, in the past, it was difficult for uh, the people uh, who live in Delta yes. to understand the, pe uh, the upper Egyptian. Yes. But now it's easy. Yes. They uh, they are uh, acting. Uh, movies and films about the upper Egyptian. Yes, yes. Well, I think that's it. With the media, with uh, uh, television, for example, with radio, uh, it's not as difficult as it, as it used to be to understand each other. Yeah? Okay, my last uh, point is some people say, okay, maybe we shouldn't even look to different varieties of English. Let's not look at Australian English and, and Canadian English and uh, New Zealand English. Everybody's speaking English these days. People from Egypt, people from Saudi Arabia, people from Hungary. Everybody knows English. So maybe we shouldn't worry. You know, a anybody can say anything any way they like. Yeah? This is another fashion. I think we've got to be careful a little bit about that. Uh, here are some examples. This is an interesting sign in a zoo in Budapest. I lived in Budapest for a couple of years. And the sign goes, please do not feed the animals. If you have any suitable food, give it to the guard on duty. Okay, now, what, what, what is the impression that you get that the guard is going to do with that food? Yeah? Eat it himself, yeah? There's a kind of bit of a mistake. Somehow, the English doesn't seem quite right to explain what the writer probably intended. Now, there's no one way that uh, we can uh, correct this, but my suggestion might be something like this. Yeah? Please do not feed the animals. You may give any appropriate food to the keeper on duty to use at feeding time. Yeah? Now this is much clearer that the food is for the animals. Yeah? Okay, uh, let's just have a look at some examples of uh, English from different countries. The next one is, we take your bags, this is in an airline ticket office, we take your bags and send them in all directions. Now, what is the feeling that you get when you read this? My bag will be lost. Yes, yes. You know, you're going to Cairo and your bag will end up in Sydney, in Australia, because they send them in all directions. Yeah? yeah? So, definitely, that needs to be corrected somehow. Let's have a look at the next one. S a sign in a bit. Yes? Yes. I can use this uh, expression. The bag means the message. And uh, all the directions means the people to receive my message. Yeah, it's true, but it, it can be read in a different way. It can be read as we send all the bags in the, r in the wrong direction. You know? It can have that feeling to it. It's a little bit like if you are a company and you want to say that we have offices everywhere. I've seen an advertising campaign which says, we are all over the place. Well, to be all over the place means to be in a big mess. Yeah? So, we are all over the place would not be a good advertising campaign because it suggests your organization is chaos. Yeah? So, if you're, if you're in advertising, you have to be very careful about uh, the, the different feelings of the words and what somebody could understand a different meaning to the meaning that you intend. What about the next one? Uh, in a Belgian tailor's shop, come inside and have a fit. Mm. Well, normally, yeah, normally a fitting is when somebody measures you up for something. A fit is when you have a, a, cr a health crisis, you know, you suddenly go <laughs> like that. Yeah? This would be having a fit. Yeah? So obviously not what's intended. Yeah? What about the next one? 
We are number one loafers. This is in an Indian bakery. Well, br I think bread maker, probably. Mm? Loafer means somebody who sits around and who does nothing. Yeah? Okay. Excuse me? Yes. How did you correct the sentence, come inside and have a fit? Get fitted? Come inside for a fitting, for a fitting. maybe. Okay. Yeah? And, the, and for the Danish airline ticket office, maybe something like, we take your bags and send them wherever you want to go, yeah? rather than in all directions. Yeah? Uh, we are number one loafers, we're, we're top bread makers, something like that would be, would be better. What about the next one? Take one of our horse-driven city tours, this is probably in Prague, it's a Czech tourism agency. Um, we guarantee no miscarriages. Miscarriage is a mistake. Yeah? We wouldn't use miscarriage in this context. Miscarriage, can, can, miscarriage could mean, uh, for example, when uh, justice goes wrong. It, we talk about a miscarriage of justice. Yeah? Uh, it also has a medical meaning. If a woman loses a child before it's born, this is a miscarriage. Yeah? So this is not what they intend at all. Yeah? So something like, uh, we, we guarantee total safety is what they mean, yeah? not miscarriage. No yeah, the, you will have no trouble, we guarantee. Yeah? The parade will take place in the morning if it rains in the afternoon. What about number four, please? Number four, uh, we are top bread makers, probably something like that. Yeah? Instead of loafers is the problem. Loafer means somebody who sits around doing nothing all day. Yeah? Loafer is, is the name for that kind of person. I don't think the, the bakery company means that. They mean that they're very good at making bread. Yeah? Okay. Uh, what about this? The parade will take place in the morning if it rains in the afternoon difficult to understand how that could work really okay no no yes I think they mean the parade will take place in the morning but in the event of rain it will take place in the afternoon yeah? but the way that you read it is that uh, normally it's going to be uh, in the afternoon, but if it rains, it will be in the morning, which is impossible because you don't know. No, no, no. No, they mean the same day. They mean the same day. Okay, and the last one. In the case of fire, do your utmost to alarm the hall porter. So do your best to. I think to alarm the hall porter would mean to surprise him very much. Yeah. Okay, to, to, to uh, warn the hall porter would be better, or to uh, give the alarm to the hall porter. But if you say, do your best to alarm the hall porter, you'd kind of go, Bleh! like that, and the hall porter would go, <gasps> like that. Yeah? This would be an alarmed hall porter. Yeah? Okay, so I hope I've persuaded you that we should be a bit careful about saying, anything can go because English is an international language it doesn't matter we don't have to be correct so what's my conclusion if we can't follow native speakers if we can't have different varieties if we have to be careful about international uh, English we need to be careful of the internet there are lots of mistakes on the internet of fact as well as of language yeah if your students some students these days are very bad or very good, depending on how you look at it, at going on Wikipedia and when you've asked them to write about a particular topic, write an essay about uh, whatever it is, they go to Wikipedia, they put their cursor, they do a cut and paste and they stick it and they say, this is my writing teacher. Yeah? Need to check it. Uh, films are great. This is a great movie. I don't know if you've seen it, The King's Speech. Uh, it won some prizes recently, Oscar prizes. Um, great story, all about the British royal family. British actors, 
and actually this is a British funded film so not all the movies uh, come from Hollywood this would be a good one to see the great thing about DVDs is that students can watch it with the subtitles in their own language and with the subtitles in English yeah, so that you can have different varieties no subtitles at all very difficult subtitles in English that helps the, the students to follow what's being said. Subtitles in their own language if their level of language is a little bit lower still. Yeah? So great possibilities there. I think one of the best ways is to for students and for teachers to use materials which are specially developed for English language teaching. I know that you know the Headway series or the Headway Plus series which has been developed uh, specifically for use in the Kingdom. Uh, I don't know if you know John and Liz Saws, they're actually friends of mine, I know them personally. Um, I started my English language teaching writing career 20 years ago at their invitation. They asked me to write a pronunciation book to go with Headway. So if you are using Headway pronunciation, that's one of my books. They've just been given an award by Queen Elizabeth II, uh, uh, an MBE. Uh, for services to English language teaching. They are fantastic people and I think Headway is a fantastic book as a result. Um, I would advise you to have a look at the Oxford University Press dictionaries. There are some fantastic dictionaries around. I used to think dictionaries were boring but I've changed my mind. They are absolutely exciting these days uh, because they're using uh, computer technology uh, to decide which words go in. You can get the CD-ROM of the dictionary on your computer. The Oxford Advanced is a perfect dictionary for teachers. I am a native speaker and I use it to check language before I teach it. Uh, one of the great things is this Oxford Genie. Say you're going on the, on the internet and you find a, a piece of language that seems a bit weird to you, a string to your bow. Yeah? What on earth does that mean? Uh, you can click on, if you've got the CD, CD-ROM of the OALD, the Oxford Advanced Learners, in your computer, you click on the genie and it gives you an explanation to have another string to your bow, to have more than one skill or plan that you can use if you need to. Yeah? So this is a fantastic opportunity uh, for teachers and for students uh, to use the internet and to get a little bit of support. Uh, you've got lots more on uh, the OALD, you've got cultural information, uh, you've got the students don't even need now to use phonetic transcriptions. So they can click on the word and they can hear the word in British English. They can click on the word and they can hear the word in American English. Yeah? So fantastic uh, opportunity. If you haven't had a chance to have a look at the OALD, I would invite you to do that. Um, so great uh, materials. It also, if you students are having problems with writing, you have the iWriter, which gives them a breakdown of an essay. This hopefully will stop them going on Wikipedia and just copying whole chunks of text and pasting it and telling you it's their own. So you can break this down, you can have a look at examples, you can have a look at a whole essay, uh, you can have a look at notes for essay writing. So I hope I've given you a little bit to think about. These, uh, those were the uh, books that we were looking at. So, I don't know if you have any questions, but that's my session, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I expect to speak about you, speak about the Aha. Well, I was, I was, uh, what I think is, uh, look at the newly published dictionaries, look at the newly published English language teaching materials. Yes, we can use things like the internet. Yes, we can... Uh, use things like uh, watching DVDs. Yes, we should be aware of different varieties of language, but we need to be careful with all of those things. If you're using a book which is like Headway, which has been specially created for language teachers, this makes your job easier. It makes your job easier to do. Yeah? And if you're using a dictionary 
Uh, I often go to a dictionary if I'm preparing, especially a vocabulary lesson, I'll go to the dictionary to check certain details. And I'm a native speaker, yeah? so there's no shame in that. Yeah? You should feel confident with uh, a good dictionary like the Oxford Advanced, for example. This is, this is your friend. This is going to be helping you uh, in your language teaching. So, if you would like to keep in touch with me, please feel free to do that. Uh, I, if you didn't get one of my visiting cards, please let me know and I'll give it to you. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. Super. Lovely. Excuse me? Yes, you have a can question. Ha yes, I'm asking, can we have your presentation? Sorry? Can we have your presentation, please? A, a copy of the presentation. Yes. If you have a, a flash drive, yeah, I do. If you send me an email, I will send you a copy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can, okay. can I give you a flash drive now, and you just transfer it to the flash drive? All right. I guess if if it's possible to do that outside yeah. in the corridor. Okay. Yeah? Thanks. Okay. Sure. Okay. So thank you very much for your time and attention. You've been a lovely audience to work with. Super. Thank you. At the end of this useful lecture, uh, on behalf of you and on behalf of the Ministry of Education, we'd like to thank our presenter, Mr. William Fowler, and uh, we would like to present this simple souvenir for him to showing our appreciation.